Well, hello, brothers and sisters. I greet you today in the name of Jesus Christ. And I just bless you. And I, I pray right now that the Heavenly Father would speak through me by the Holy Spirit's power in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, what, what I'm sharing with you is a testimony of something horrible and terrible that, that I saw when I was 22. And what, what I saw was basically what was going on. I, I was a drug addict and alcoholic for many years and a troublemaker. I, I sinned in so many different ways and I didn't, I didn't regard God. I didn't care about God and just went my own way. I, I, I was raised Catholic, but, but I had rejected that faith. I, I, I rejected it. I hated it. And I, I thought that, that religion and God were basically things of the past that needed to go away. And I was just living a, a wicked life. And so I was about 22 years old. And I'm looking out my window one, one day and suddenly uh, something, something t takes over my, my vision. And I, I'm looking up. I, I'm, I'm in a place and I'm somewhere uh, standing uh, and I'm looking up at this, this glorious um, sort of sky way above. And it's like it's this sort of circular thing that, that's, that's glorious white, golds, yellows, very beautiful. And it's sort of like way, way, way up and in the d distance above me. And it's just, I'm outside of it is, is what's clear, but it's very beautiful and it's this wonderful place. And it's, 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 it's clear to me that I, I'm, I, I'm not there. And, and as my, it's like my vision in this, in this vision, if you will, uh, slowly started to pan down. And so I'm kind of going from looking up to looking down slowly, and I begin to see these layers of 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 just 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 reds and oranges and and um, rock and 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 fires and screams and the, and this horrendous music that is playing in the background, this sort of dark, demonic, twisted music, and and just. Every sort of evil is taking place, and I'm realizing that I'm in a bad place, and I don't know what's going on. I'm scared out of my mind. I have no idea what's going on. It seems like I've just been dropped out of my <laughs> out of my bedroom and into this this place that I I don't even know what it is, and uh, my vision is panning down. And I'm seeing all these layers. It's like layer after layer, like level after level. And it was clear to me where I was standing was like a super, super low level. And I see t t today, the, I saw, saw this when I was 22 and today I'm 36 and I'm a pastor today. So basically from the moment I was born, I, I'd been called by God to a, to a special vocation to the fivefold ministry. And, and I assume that I was seeing myself at this very low level of hell because I had been called to the fivefold, and, and, and because I had uh, the, the, this thing that I was seeing was apparently a what if scenario. If I if I had died at that moment, it seemed like like here's what would happen if you died right now, and I would have been apparently at this very low level of hell being one who was called to the ministry and who rejected it. I don't know if it was the lowest level of hell. It, it felt that way, but um, I, I, I know I've heard that in other hell testimonies that um, those who are called to, to the ministry, if they do go to hell, they go to lower le levels. Like the Word of God says that it would be better to have never even known about Jesus than to know about Jesus and then turn away. Um, or, or like uh, with, with Judas, that it would have been better for this man to have never been born. And uh, so, so that kind of became clear to me. And as I'm panning down and seeing these various levels of this horrible place and the screams and the cries and the, the, the suffering sounds, um, I, I'm realizing I'm in a bad place. And, and I'm starting to think it's just coming to me that I'm in hell. And it's just, it's, it, it must be something when you're in hell, you know you're in hell. It's just like a, a knowledge that you have. And immediately my mind tried to hide from that, that reality, like not wanting to accept it. And that's, you know, that's very common for the human mind. We, we, when something traumatic happens, we don't want to accept it, right? We kind of flee away from it. And we, we, we go through that grieving process, right, of, of, you might say, bargaining, you know. I'm not really in hell, I'm t telling myself. I'm... 
I'm um, I'm dreaming. I'm I'm sleeping. This is a nightmare. Um, I, I'm I'm hallucinating or something, and and it's just like, apparently on the earth you can kind of lie to yourself sometimes and believe it. But in hell, you can't lie to yourself. Like, I remember it just like, it just cut right through all the lies, the realization, no, you're in hell. You are in hell. And it just was clear to me, I'm in hell. And as I realized that, and I'm hearing these screams, and I'm, I'm realizing there's demons around me. And they, and they are laughing at me. They're mocking me. They're kind of saying, we got you kind of thing. Um, they're... They're, they're, they're laughing, they're making fun of me. Um, I don't remember exactly what they said, but they're like mocking me. And then what, what happened was truly horrific. Um, they, they started ripping me apart. And but, but what I mean by ripping me apart is like, I, I could almost see it in my vision, all my flesh being ripped apart, almost like a flower, like in all directions, all at the same time, like just ripped apart. And I, I saw, saw the splitting of my vision and my flesh just just f flying apart at, at a massive speed. And the pain of it was unbearable. And, it, and I just screamed out and I cried out and I screamed. And then basically what, what happens in, in, in hell is you, you can't just die once. I mean, you're ripped apart and you, you feel every inch of it. It feels so horrible. And then you come back together. And then, then it happens again. And I remember the demons around me were laughing at me. Um, They're kind of setting up these scenarios t to make it worse. Um, like it would stop for a second and then you're kind of relieved and then it would start again. And then they laugh at you. And, and I'm, I remember that happened a few times where they ripped me apart and I'm screaming out and I'm horrified. And I, 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 it's the, the pain you feel in hell is unbearable. And as you scream out and cry and scream and, and, and scream for mercy, um, it's just nothing makes it better. Like when, when you cry on the earth and someone dies, maybe you get upset and you cry, you feel a bit relieved when you cry out, right? But, but when you're in hell, when you, you cry out, you just realize no one cares. And it, it gives you no, no relief or satisfaction. You, you, you can't feel anything good in hell. Um, so, so, you're just, so then what happened was they kind of they left me alone for, for a millisecond. And I said, please, no, please, no, please, no. And just rip, 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 rip. And then it just started happening over and over and over and over again. Like rip, 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 rip. Over and over and over. I'm being ripped apart. Super fast, super fast, super fast. And it's the most unbearably horrible pain that I can, that, that it's, it's unbearable, it's too much pain, and you're just screaming, and, you, and you're just, well, you know, you're, you're just, you can't, you can't even scream, so you're just gurgling, and it's just, it was so horrible, brothers and sisters, that is not a place you want to go, and, and, and you realize this will never end, this is just going to continue, second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour, for eternity, for a thousand years, a hundred years, a thousand years, a million years, and 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 you're that's it, that's that's your life now, forever. And it's so horrible. Do not go to this place, brothers and sisters. No matter what, do not go there. Okay. Now I want to t tell you about one more experience I had. This was when I was 19 years old. Okay, and I was sitting in my in my in my computer chair in my room. And I was just waking up, you know, I was, a, I was pretty much a bomb, you know, I would do drugs or drink, wake up the next day, kind of sit in my computer chair on the internet until, you know, meet up with some people and do whatever, right? So I'm sitting in my computer chair and so suddenly my, my vision goes black, okay, just completely black. And I, I, I'm, I'm like kind of looking around and, and all I see is blackness and I look down and my body's not there, there, there and all I see is the blackest darkness and so then I'm trying to breathe and I can't breathe I realize there, there's no air so I'm 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 super scared you know I'm like I'm terrified as I'm in this place I, and and I, I'm and so I, I suddenly tr try to scream out but I realize I can't breathe and I, I have no voice I have no voice so I, 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 what I do is I scream out with my soul. That's 
and I screamed out with my soul in this moment, with my soul, because you, you, you have no voice. And it was just total darkness. And I, I, I had this realization as I was there that all the blood in my body had turned to sand in a second and, had been put, and, and it was pouring out my wrist. Both my wrists are pouring out this sand. And I, 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 and, and I read later in the Bible that, that the, the, the life of a person is in their blood. And in, in, in hell there is no life, so there is no blood. So, so I'm, I, I'm in this pitch darkness. I'm screaming out, but I can't scream. So, so I'm screaming out with my, with, my, with my soul, with my spirit. And then so suddenly I come to, to again in my room by my computer. And, and, you know, with both of these experiences, when I was 19 and when I was 22, you'd think that would wake me up and get me to receive Christ, but it actually didn't. And what, what I did was I kind of just pushed these things into the corner of my mind because I didn't want to have to grapple with what they meant. And so you, you just kind of hide it in a corner in your mind. You, you just kind of you push it off and, it, and you kind of repress it, right? Repression. You, you kind of hide it in your mind from yourself. And so, but, and I think, think those were previews for me of what I might experience. And I think the second place, when I was 19, I was seeing outer darkness. And I'm not sure how those t two things correlate, like which one would apply to me if I was seeing different parts of hell. I think I was, but it was truly terrible, brothers and sisters. And I'm, 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 I'm just sh sharing this right now because I'm, I'm not going to be afraid of people anymore. I'm going to fear God and, and speak what, what God has shared with me to, to the world. So that's why I'm sharing this, and I give God all the glory. Now, brothers and sisters, um, friends, people of the world, do not, please, please do not go to hell. No matter what you do, do not go to hell. It is not worth 80 years, 70 years of sin on, on this world, no matter how much fun it is, um, for an eternity in hell. And the truth is, sin isn't even that fun anyway. It just turns into a nightmare anyway, I know from experience. So what you need to do if you do not want to go to hell is you need to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you need to be born again. You, you need to really like have that born-again experience in Jesus Christ and receive the Holy Spirit and have your sins washed away by the blood of Jesus who was slaughtered on the cross for our sins. And that is what you need to access in your life. And it is not a one and done thing, brothers and sisters. That's what we've turned it into. A lot of pastors teach it as a sort of one and done, almost like you're picking up a Happy Meal. You're one and done, see you later sort of thing. And that's not it, brothers and sisters. And that, 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 that's why I'm not going to give you some, some uh, quick prayer to pray and then you're finished. That's not how it works. That is not how it works. It is about putting our faith in Jesus Christ and who he is. It is about studying his word. It is about seeking God. And, and the word of God says that when, when, when we reach out for God, he reaches out for us. So I would encourage you to, to begin exploring the scriptures. Read that gospel of John. Uh, be, begin to pray. Begin to just call out to God. Call out to Jesus and, and, and ask the Lord to reveal himself to you visit some churches in your area and just sit in on some services. Um, see what it's like. Um, watch some YouTube sermons and um, just, just get into this thing and begin to seek the Lord. And as you seek the Lord, the Lord will begin to seek you. And then as you enter into that process of seeking after the Lord uh, for, for weeks, for months, for even years, eventually it'll come to that point where you, you realize, hey, I need Jesus. And it, and it all clicks into place and you get born again. And that, that is a work of God in you. It is, it is not a work of, of yourself. It is that Jesus Christ comes to you and saves you. And you, you, your job is to receive that by faith. And, and, and once you receive that by faith, some, some people will think, okay, finished. No, that is not the case either. It is not once saved, always saved. That is a false doctrine of hell. 
it, this is something where we need to continue in the faith until our very last day, where we need to keep walking with Jesus week by week, month by month, year by year. Keep seeking him. Keep seeking the Lord. Keep praying. Keep serving the, those in need. Continue to share the gospel. Continue to study the word and understand it. Con- continue to pray more and more. Continue to grow spiritually. And, it, and, and, and it's really about repentance, turning away from sins in our lives and embracing holiness in Christ. So as as the Lord reveals sins to you in your life, you repent of those things. You turn away from them. You, you cast them off. And in, in Christ, you have the victory. So that's the process. And as things pop up in your life, you, you repent. You turn away from them. And you seek the Lord Jesus Christ and all that. And, and, and you forgive your enemies. And you, you, you turn away from sins. And you, and, and, and you, and you, you help those who are suffering. And you, and you care for the needs of the lost and hurting. And as you do, do that, you're growing as a Christian into a mature Christian who's fit for heaven. So that is my word for you today, brothers and sisters. Heaven is real, and it is more beautiful than we can possibly imagine. And hell is real, and hell is more terrible than you can possibly imagine. And I, I've seen a little bit of it, and it is truly terrible. Do not go there, okay? Please, do not go there. But I just pray that the Lord would bless you in all that you do and that you would walk with Jesus. So God bless you today.